the buzz of getting hit in the face or punching someone in the face is you're you're on edge all the time. Like it's it's just a great buzz to have. Because he's never a big guy, so he just he did have that kind of he always backs himself. Knowing that my family, friends, sponsors truly believe in me, like it's a huge boost. The fluid right uppercut to it, bringing through the middle. Now a thing of the past, and Ansel on the onslaught. He's got an exciting style, he hits very hard, he pleases the crowd, he's got a good fan base. Everything's there, everything's there for him to become a champion. I said to my dad, I was like, if, what if, what if it never happened? What if I don't try? Like, I've got to try, like, if something that gives me that much of a buzz and makes me that happy, then you've got to go for it. Fighting at super lightweight with a professional record currently sitting at 5-0, Tom Ansel is an exciting up-and-coming boxer who is already beginning to make a name for himself in the boxing world despite only becoming pro just two years ago. He is currently fighting under Goodwin Boxing and has fought under Haymaker Promotions which has allowed him to meet some big names in the sport and has inspired some strong ambitions of his own. I think every boxer that, that starts boxing, he, you, you've, got to be, you've got to be aiming towards being a world champion otherwise. What are you? What are you aiming for? Like you can aim for, you can aim for lower belts. Of course, I'm gonna aim for them. But I need to pick up those on the way to being world champion. When I when I first started, all I wanted to do was win. I just wanted to win that first fight, and then I wanted to KO someone. Got that in the second fight, and then after that, it was just about building experience and, and climbing the ladder to to get some get some belts. I had to do quite a lot of media work at David Hayes gym and he took over my social media which was which was brilliant and then I uh, spoke to a couple of people and they were like oh, I can't believe David Hayes being on his social media like a former world champion um, and like a massive name because around the world really when I looked through pictures and back on the fight and like him reaching out like shaking my hand and and I see him on the on the front row. It's like as soon as I drop the opponent, him stand up, clap him. Like it's a great feeling to have because he he must rate me. James De Kettle was in the other day, so a former Olympic champion, world title holder. And you think, God, like this is this is like the real deal. Um, but when I'm in the gym training, all I do is watch him. Like it sounds a bit weird, but I just watch him and learn. So it's good to watch to see how how you rest in a fight and how you cope with different scenarios in, in sparring and boxing just by watching these these guys who are on the border of being world champions or world title holders. Throughout my childhood I think my mum and dad always made sure I was part of sport so I was playing I think on one Sunday well for a couple of seasons I was playing rugby in the morning been playing football in the afternoon, so for for them guys to just keep me in sport was brilliant. He's always been a determined um, little boy, quite strong-willed, um, but also quite caring. He's all, even at primary school he was interested in sport and um, would help children who weren't necessarily that good at sport. He wanted to make sure they were involved. Because we both played sport, especially rugby, so there's always like a brotherly kind of rivalry, we always playing rugby or football in the garden. Um, we used to box each other when mum and dad went out and um, have a glove each, which is always good fun, not that I would do it now, I suppose. Um, <laughs> this was when you played for um, Hitching as well, wasn't it? Yeah, county tournament. Must be end of season. Yeah, 2000. Oh, Mini's Rugby Festival. 2004. Four. You must have some lecture photos. Yeah, How old were you when you played for lecture? About 12. Yeah, 11 or 12. He's never really bothered me that he's, he's boxing. He's seeing how seriously he takes it. I don't like it. As a mum, I don't like it. Um, but I have seen how determined and committed he is to it. Um, and also what other people think about him. Um, 
they obviously feel he's got a talent there and that, that he can progress. So he said that if he didn't try it, he would always wonder what, you know, what could have been. Tom continued with rugby throughout his teenage years and decided to get stronger for the sport by taking up boxing. However, due to his coach and close teammates leaving the club, Tom lost his passion for rugby and focused solely on boxing, but he believes his childhood sport taught him well for life inside the ring. It teaches you respect straight away, because you've got to call the refs. Uh, and I, I carry that through into boxing and because it comes a little bit of a habit. I can take a punch well, um, but I think that was down, down to rugby and playing from a young age with, with adults, which are like, late 20s, early 30s, I think for a 17 year old to be tackling people who are like 18 stone is, I think that's hardened me up a little bit. I've known Tom for about 15 years, uh, he turned up to the rugby club when yeah, we were about 10, uh, as this little munchkin, you know, like a little little short chubby guy, wanting to play in the backs and everyone was just like, mate, you're, you're not a back, but Turned out to be a half decent player. I mean, my brother put him on to me. Um, I opened up the pub about six years ago. And uh, my youngest brother just said, so I've got a guy down at the club, needs a job. Um, can, you, can you sort him out? Can you get him a job? And then, yeah, he, he started here about, about six years ago and um, grew to be quite a good mate. As a mate growing up, always like, always life and soul of the party, always looking for, for a joke, always looking like just making people laugh, just a good general good lad to be around. Well, there's two Toms at the moment we've got now, really. Yeah. You've got an in-camp Tom and you've got an out-of-camp Tom. And like, in-camp, in you don't really see him. He's so dedicated, he's training all the time, from five o'clock in the morning, you know, he lives it. Two, three Absolutely times lives it. And then the Tom outside of the camp is, you know, relax, beer, jokers, yeah. you know, have fun. Right, all that, you know, that kind of stuff, just back to kind of who Tom is. The more fights he's been having, I've been getting less and less nervous because I know how prepared he is and I know yeah, like, yeah, yeah. what to expect. I know how, the determination that he's got and the amount of effort he puts in. Like he's as I said earlier, all or nothing. He's hundred percent commitment. Mm. So I know that when it comes to fight night, I know that he's as prepared as he ever could be. Liam, like he, uh, he when I'm going through training, he's always there if I feel a little bit down. The training camp is one of the hardest things ever. It's mentally challenging, emotionally challenging, physically challenging. And he, he gives me that little little get up and go. On the morning of his fight, I always send him like this video clip um, about being brothers. So I just let him know that <coughs> win, lose or draw, like he's not letting anyone down, you know. But the good thing about Tom is he's never lost who he is. He's still that yeah. idiot, he's still that funny guy, uh, which is good, you know, it's good that he's, he's kept his feet firmly on the ground. He's got a massive following. Yeah. He, he must bring 200 people plus to a fight. Massive following from Hertfordshire and from now Essex. At the way that he is, he's, he can punch. So everyone wants to see him everyone, and, and he's aggressive. He's a front foot, you know, like he always wants to, to put on a show for everyone. So mm. that's why people want to go and watch him. Tom progressed with boxing in the unlicensed world and after winning a number of unlicensed fights, was offered the chance to appear on Frank Warren's Total Combat a TV show which sees quicker knockouts and a higher reward. After the show, Tom had a number of meetings with Frank, but a pivotal moment threatened the future of his boxing career. I was playing rugby at the time still, I thought, I'm not going to go professional here, like, I just want to have a meeting, probably about um, total combat. I broke my hand. Oh, and, oh my God. So they backed off me a contract, broke my hand, and. That was literally one of the worst things ever for me. I went to the hospital, NHS misdiagnosed me, and then I ended up having a operation which I should have had in the first two weeks, six months later, so my bone was pretty much dead. I went into a bit of, not, not depression or anything, but I was moody for quite, quite a long time because I thought, like, what am I going to do now? Like everything, like all of a sudden, I've set up this dream, got a contract offered to me, and then it's been taken away. I was, I was literally broken. I think Danielle, she she helped me through that quite a bit because she was like, support. She's like, no one said that you can't box again. She was making sure as soon as I could get back in the gym, I was working hard, and she was just encouraging me, like taking my mind off when I was actually injured and couldn't. Go to the gym, take my mind off it. It was devastating, but, but 
luckily family and, and Daniel helped me through that quite a bit. Because the only people I really care about is Daniel, family, Liam and Phil, and obviously my little boy, but my little boy, like, he's, he's, he's wicked, he, he supports me for everything, he reckons I'm going to be world champion, so. I mean, Imagine me going after Nathan and saying oh, I've lost it the weekend. But like, it's, it's just not, not there. I want to be I don't I don't know if at the moment he's got lots of role models in his life, but I wanna be his main role model and and I want him to be someone to look, I want him to look up to me like properly. So I can't lose for that. I've got to get a belt for him. Through the work of his first professional coach, Mark Masso, Tom counts himself very grateful to have his boxing career revived and is excited at what he's now working towards under current coach, Tony Peel. Going from Mark to Tony Peel in, um, at Punch London is massive. Like Tony's changed me as a boxer completely. Tony taught me how to be a boxer. He said, Look, listen, you've got strength, you've got power. That's fine, I'm going to use that, we're going to use it effectively. My first fight with him, which was another Haymaker promotion, I was going against this guy called Fonz Alexander. So he's a, he's a well-known journeyman. He tests um, prospects like me coming up. And I just, I, I, I just played with him, I knocked him down, he had to be knocked down. I think it was for the first time in something like 50 fights he's been knocked down. And then I was just staying away, just boxing him nicely. And then wish I fought back, I was thinking, God, how much I've changed. Tom came from the unlicensed world, like, which kind of put me off a little bit. Um, but once I saw him and trained with him, got to know him, he's got what he makes to win belts. Like. Uh, the qualities are, he's a very, very determined man. Um, technically, he's very strong, he can box a little bit, and he's learning day, day, every day and every week. But the main thing is his mentality. His mentality, he will be successful. Just, I've got no doubt. No. Ah! Yeah. Practice that left hook. Go on. Left hook. Just right. Go on front. Hit the left hook. Go on. Bang. Good. And again. Bang. Good. In the gym here in Mill Hill is buzzing. Now we've got a lot of boxers uh, and at all different levels. So to for someone like Tom, or any of the guys that are kind of 2-0, 3-0, 4-0, they're looking at um, uh, Frank and they're looking at Derek Trezora, they're looking at Mal Queen. These are guys that have uh, been there, done it, and they're succeeding. And to train alongside them and to mix with them, take tips off them, and just rub shoulder to shoulder with them, I mean, it gives, it's, it's, it's invaluable. Um, they watch these guys and they can, I can do this, I can do it. It's not a million miles away, I can do what they're doing. Bam, good shot. But faster. Bam, good. Bam, good. Now throw the body and head, like we did in the ring. Bam, good. Key balance, and again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep your foot in position. Set him up. Bam, bam. Good. Much better. Wow, wow. Good. Good Tom. Mm -mm. That's it, come across him. Side step across him. Side step, that's it. Good, that's better, that's better. Good, nice movement, mate. Very good. What's Tom's potential? I think he can go and fight for a Southern Area title. I think there's, that's, that's a given. It all depends on if the progression keeps going the way it's going at the moment, with the, the, the same time scale, like I think he could go beyond that. But let's see. I think the first step is getting ready for eight, ten rounds of boxing and getting for a Southern Area. Like, you mean? So, and then after that, it's kind of, let's see. Let's sit down and let's judge it again then. At the moment, 
I'm excited. Like, mm. I think he's got the attributes to to do something maybe special. Do you mean? Like, like I said at the beginning, he's uh, it's his application. Like he just wants to achieve. Like he just and he will do everything. He can, he's, an, he's a true athlete. You know what, Mark? Before I walk out, I'm I'm proper proper nervous. Like. Like I'm shaking and everything, but as soon as my music comes on, like, I'm flawless. I change straight away. I come out, I come out singing my music. As soon as I hear that, it's literally I'm just channeled. I'm, like, I'm just enjoying the moment because, like, like I said, I thought I had all this taken away from me when I was injured. But as soon as I walk out, just enjoy the moment. And then when I see him, I'm like, you're in trouble, mate. <laughs> I like, was getting the KO on on um, my first Haymaker show. I thought I was losing that fight, to be honest. Then, then I remember hitting, and then you hear the crowd all of a sudden. It's like they all, it's like kind of like suddenly goes quiet, and then it's like they're all like, like a pack of wolves, literally straight on you, like screaming and that. And then I hit him with an overhand right, and I remember looking at him, and he's kind of like he's gone stiff, and like. Oh God, I've got to, like, this is my time. Like, oh, like if you think you're losing that time, and not because he was hurting me, because he was landing so many punches, and he's quite a taller guy, I thought, oh, I've got to go for it now. So I saw him stumble back, and I just threw everything at him. And then um, knocked him to the floor, and then uh, the referee said he slipped, and I was like, absolutely no, no way. So I thought, I've got to go out again. Got to, uh, Hit him with a few, and the referee said he slipped again. I remember I turned to Mark, who was in the corner, I was like, What exactly is it? And then um, Mark was like, Just calm down, hands up, go for it. And then I caught him with, I think I caught him with an uppercut and another overhand right, and he stumbled back to the ropes. I just unloaded, I, was, I didn't think about the fence, I was swinging. And then the referee would jump in. Um, I looked in, I was like, I walked over the mark, I was kind of like, actually no, I don't even think I walked over the mark, I think, you know that uh, McGregor walk where <laughs> after he wins, I, I think I remember doing that, not to be like, not to be like big headed or anything, but just that's just how you feel. I took a gun for that, and I remember just shouting out to the crowd, and like, come on, I was just so excited to get the professional, um, get a KO on the record. I think he's got great people around him, his management company, he's got great family around him, he's got great mates around him. If he just if he wants it, you know, he wants to continue like this and uh, and become a you know, you know, fifteen and oh and start getting championship fights, the only person is a fighter that's in his way. He's fearless, like he, he knows what he wants and he could chop his arm off and I swear to God I think he would somehow come back. He would he, he wants it really, really badly that. When I see the fight that I did go and watch, it was just amazing. The the Ansel Army, it's called, isn't it? He's and you know people that were just saying such fantastic things about him and how well he's doing from his clients to school mates to uni people, um, family and everything. And and that I'm really really proud of. I want to get all the belts. I want. I want. I don't want to lose, and so, and I want to win all the belts outright. So that's my long-term goal. I want to get Southern Era, English, British, Commonwealth, European, and well, uh, and it is hard for me because I haven't had as much experience as people going into Olympics. But I don't think people going into Olympics are as mentally strong as what I am. So I think that gives me the edge, and that drives me on to the long-term goal, being world champion. Unified world champion and retiring um, undefeated. Just want to say a massive thank you to all my sponsors. 